to be joined today by our governor, Governor Gavin Newsom, and Chief Floyd Mitchell of the Oakland Police Department. I'm going to give you a little update on what CHP's efforts have been in Oakland. I look forward to hearing from Chief Mitchell and the governor as well. Uh, CHP in August of 2023 deployed a team of officers to Oakland to assist the Oakland Police Department. Uh, their mission, their assignment was proactive enforcement, targeting vehicle theft, highway violence, organized crime, in view patrol. Uh, we, we called this Operation Safe Streets. Operation Safe Streets laid the groundwork for our larger law enforcement surge back in February of this year when we deployed 120 officers and investigators to the greater East Bay. Um, this was a joint effort with our partners throughout Alameda County and Oakland, including Oakland Police Department, Alameda County Sheriffs. During this surge, our officers conducted a variety of enforcement operations focused on traffic safety, auto theft, retail theft, cargo theft. Uh, these are central to the CHP's mission of providing the highest level of safety, service, and security to the people of California. Uh, the February operation was a success and yielded impressive results quickly, leading to the formation of a CHP dedicated crime suppression team in the East Bay. Uh, this team has been patrolling Oakland's hotspots, including um, some of the ones <clears throat> on Broadway, Hagenberger area, all in addition to the work of the CHP's Golden Gates Special Services Unit, which is conducting multi-agency sideshow street racing operations, combating vehicle theft, recovering stolen cargo containers at the Port of Oakland, tackling fencing operations at Oakland flea markets, and combating commercial vehicle violations in or about Oakland. To date, these operations have resulted in over 560 arrests by CHP, including 156 felony arrests, the recovery of more than 1,100 stolen vehicles, and the seizure of 55 firearms. Uh, before I turn to Chief Mitchell, uh, I will just say the crime that we're witnessing and seeing in Oakland is unacceptable. And at the governor's direction, the CHP is stepping up and will further our efforts to ensure the safety of our community. The people of Oakland, the people of California deserve to have a community that's safe. The CHP is all in. We'll be doubling down our efforts to support the Oakland PD and assist them, ensuring that the people of Oakland have the safe community that they deserve. Chief Mitchell. Thanks. Good morning. And first of all, uh, I want to thank Governor Newsom for making the investment in Oakland and doing everything that he can from his level and from his seat to make Oakland safer. Yesterday, I got to spend um, most of the day in East Oakland talking to the business owners about some of the crime that we've been facing here in Oakland. I think it's important to understand that the cooperation and coordination that we have, not only with the governor's office and the CHP and our other law enforcement officers within Al uh, Alameda County uh, in the Bay Area uh, is strong. We continue to work with our federal partners to address crime and the uh, perception of crime within the Alameda County and Oakland itself. I think it's important to also uh, shout out to uh, Mayor Tao for advocating for the citizens of Oakland to the mayor's office, I'm sorry, to the governor's office to uh, get this additional assistance for our individuals, or for our community here in Oakland. So uh, I, can, I look forward to the continued cooperation with the California Highway Patrol and our officers, the ceasefire program to address the crime issues that we have faced, that we are facing here in Oakland. And with that, I'll turn it over to the governor. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chief, and thank you to Commissioner. Thank you uh, to men and women, uh, the Oakland Police Department, our partners in this effort. As the commissioner noted, uh, we initiated some proactive policing uh, late last year here in Oakland. We stepped that up significantly in February with an operation uh, to target and to saturate uh, areas of Oakland uh, with aggressive policing uh, that addressed some of the heightened concerns that many of the residents and business uh, leaders ha had experienced. Uh, we saw great initial success. Uh, we committed not to turn our back and walk away to the people of Oakland, uh, but we were sober about the fact that uh, the CHP has operations all across the state of California and cannot supplement the work that's done by local law enforcement, but can enhance it. Uh, our job was to focus here on Oakland, but also to focus on other regions, uh, including uh, areas in and around the Bay Area. Uh, 
regions, by the way, now across the state that include Bakersfield, where we've been running similar operations. Uh, the last two weeks, we've been down in Riverside. Uh, we'll be talking, highlighting more about the success of that early operation, or at least the success of the last few weeks, the early part of that operation uh, in the coming weeks and days. But we're back here in Oakland, uh, mindful that there's still more work to be done. Uh, mindful that we need to step up our efforts and step up our resources. We're going to move the California Highway Patrol from 42 shifts that they're currently operating in Oakland. Uh, we're going to increase that fourfold. We're going to have 162 shifts uh, starting uh, next week. Uh, we're going to focus over the course of the next four months. This is not a permanent operation. It can't be a permanent operation. It's not the job of the California Highway Patrol. Uh, but over the course of the next four months, we're committing uh, to keep up the intensity of this operation uh, that, as uh, the commissioner noted, has already uh, generated 1,162 stolen vehicles uh, that have been recovered, 1,162, uh, 562 arrests, as the commissioner noted, uh, and now 55, 56 guns that are linked to crimes specifically. That's the operation to date. It's been successful. And now we're moving into this next phase. We also are mindful that we need to be more aggressive as it relates to uh, the investigations and accountability, the prosecutions of some of these cases. Uh, yes, we've been disappointed. Uh, the uh, lack of engagement uh, with the DA's office. And so we're moving forward. Uh, rather than complaining about it, rather than uh, lamenting about it, uh, we're going to be moving some of the prosecution uh, to the state of California, the Attorney General's office, uh, for, again, targeted prosecution. This is not the job of the AG's office to assume all the responsibility of the Alameda County DA's office, quite the contrary. But we want to le lessen the load. We want to address some of the more complex cases. So we'll take case by case. The AG's office could talk more about specific cases um, another time. But the idea is to supplement and support uh, those efforts at the local uh, DA's office uh, to move forward. Unfortunately, uh, our offer uh, to provide a California Cal Guard, which we refer to as JAGS, along the lines of what we did very successfully uh, in partnership with Brooke Jenkins in San Francisco, uh, that was not enthusiastically embraced. So we have to move forward uh, with a new approach uh, with our Attorney General and our Department of Justice. Uh, so we're moving in that direction as well. I'll remind folks that this was not just a law enforcement only uh, program, quite the contrary. I met with uh, leaders in the community and we said this was a holistic bottom-up approach. Uh, those ongoing unprecedented investments in community building uh, continue. Uh, we were able to hold the line broadly uh, with our two-year budget, balanced budget, not just for this year but next year, uh, and maintaining uh, the vast majority of those investments here in Oakland and Alameda. That includes a 10-point plan with, Cal uh, with Caltrans on beautification, on cleaning up. I've been very directly involved in that. I feel like I'm mayor again, I'm back out there on the streets, uh, rolling up my sleeves, cleaning up. Uh, some of these streets and encampments and doing some of the beautification work. That work continues. We're not walking away from that as well. But look, I'm not the mayor of, uh, of, of, of Oakland. I'm not a member of the County Board of Supervisors of Alameda County. Uh, our job is not to substitute, but again, to support uh, the work that's being done. I want to thank the mayor's office for being a partner uh, in these uh, proactive uh, programs as it relates to the policing. Uh, not a sparring partner, a working partner, as it relates to these works. That's why I'm very grateful the chief is here, and I'm very grateful for the partnership and the open hand of support uh, the chief has provided uh, the men and women uh, from the Highway Patrol. Final point, uh, just deep respect uh, for uh, our Highway Patrol. Uh, I've been saying this over and over and over and again. Uh, this is the Swiss Army knife of law enforcement in this state. You've seen them all up and down the state, not just uh, out there doing their traditional work on the freeways and keeping us safe, and, uh, working to make sure uh, people uh, are getting home uh, and getting through um, uh, their day-to-day -day lives. But they've been asked and tasked to do work on fentanyl interdiction. They've been asked and tasked to do work on retail theft. They've been asked and tasked to do work on campuses, and they continue to meet uh, the call over and over again, including, uh, by the way, the call to uh, reinforce the ranks. And I want to just thank the commissioner. We've, we've committed to over 1,000 new CHP officers. I think we've got an academy class this week. We've got over 100 new cadets. Uh, we're on pace. We're making progress there as well. That will allow us to supplement and support more of these efforts down the line in the state. Final point. Um, one of the highlighted areas for this state has been addressing the issues of retail theft organized retail theft, the smash and grab, 
uh, the issues that have been highlighted uh, over and over again. If you haven't been paying attention, uh, turn on your social media. Uh, we've been very focused on that for years uh, now. Uh, you may recall uh, Long Beach, we were with police chiefs from up and down the state of California years ago, announcing a new task force with the California Highway Patrol, working with our investigators, the National Guard, uh, to support our efforts to address retail theft, organized retail theft. We provided unprecedented grants to cities and counties up and down the state. You may recall over a year ago, about $267 million specifically for new grants for vertical prosecution, investigations, and technology uh, related to the issues of organized retail theft. I say all that to make this point. I also want to highlight the work the California Highway Patrol has been doing with our partners. Uh, year to date, 167 percent increase in the number of arrests uh, related to those task force uh, efforts. So they're paying dividends, uh, and we want to see more work done now that all that money has been distributed, hundreds of millions of dollars, money in the past never existed, real money to support sheriffs, to support uh, local municipalities in these efforts going forward. So uh, we're continuing to stay at, on that uh, and very mindful of the stress and anxiety that uh, many people are feeling in that area as well. With that, of course, we're here to answer any questions. Well, that's why I'm back. And well, yeah, I'll, I'll, Chief has a strong opinion. I'll okay. defer to him. So, so, so first of all, I, I want to clarify something in regards to the. You're talking about the 76 gas station, uh, and, and and again, uh, I'm, I'm very new to. Uh, I'm very, I'm very, well, okay, I thought you were talking about the 76 gas station, but I want to, I want to address that because you said, you said it took hours for us to respond. So I want to address that situation because I think it's very important. First of all, me and my executive staff, we're going to take uh, any crime within the city of Oakland very seriously. I met with Sam yesterday at 76 gas station in regards to the incident that occurred this past weekend uh, following a uh, sideshow activity. And what I explained to uh, the, the business owner, Sam, uh, and and we had a good conversation before we came out and spoke to the media because I wanted them to understand that we had a conversation about what occurred. What occurred that, that day is the information that was provided to our dispatch, first of all, it came in an hour later than the, the event that, that happened. Everyone had left the, the, the location. And beyond that, when his employee communicated what had happened to his business, it was prioritized as a property crime at that point in time. So the call was delayed. And one of the things that we talked about in detail yesterday and that Deputy Chief uh, Casey Johnson is doing is we are spending some time educating our business owners on what to say when they have crimes occur at their business. So I agree with you. No business should have what happened to him happen to him. But we also need to make sure we're partnering with our business owners to, to educate them on what they need to, to communicate to us so we provide the proper response. So I, I do want to clarify that because I didn't want the governor to, to get up here and have to explain why there was a delay in the response. There was a delay in response in regards to, to for a number of reasons. So I'll let you address that other piece. But uh, we are working with our business owners to make sure that we are responding appropriately based on the information that they can provide us, but it's also our responsibility to educate our, not only our business owners but our public on when you dial 911, communicate the proper information so we can prioritize the call properly so you can get the appropriate response. I'm not up on the jewelry store, so I, if, I'll be more than happy. I'll be more than happy to meet with you after this to fight the information. But I can't. You're asking me something that I don't know about. So you know, and, and you're shaking your head like you know I'm supposed to know about that. When I, if, if you want to get with me afterwards, I got my PIO here, and we can address that specific situation. Governor, thanks. So look, we're here uh, try to solve problems uh, and uh, and address these challenging issues. Uh, we're here not solve for every incident, or at least try to reflect on each one, but solve for a pattern. The pattern continues, it persists. And so we're stepping up our efforts to support the community, to support law enforcement. We've made a firm commitment. We've seen the fruits of that 
over the course of the last number of months, uh, unprecedented resources. I, I agree with you. Let me express just deep frustration that uh, we put out money for the city and they didn't apply for the grant. Uh, so I'm going to answer that quite directly. Very frustrated by that. But that frustration can turn into despair and, uh, and cynicism, uh, and we could turn our back, but I'm never going to turn my back on this community. I love Oakland. It needs to heal. It's a great community. I have deep roots here. And uh, I said I'd come back in February. I've been back five or six times since. High-profile uh, efforts. Now we're back significantly, forcefully, to address these concerns uh, that have been highlighted not only by the question, but continue to be highlighted by members of the community. similar concerns that led to the redeployment of the prosecutors, and when can we expect to see the Attorney General picking up these cases? Well, they're, uh, they're already moving on that, the AG's office. Look, we, we put out a, a letter uh, detailing this process, um, and it was clear to me that it was, it was just, we were just extending for time, and there wasn't a sincere commitment uh, to follow through on the offer. Uh, as you know, the, the, the head of the unit, our narcotics unit, uh, actually has left. So now the unit has no supervisor and actually no personnel. Uh, we expressed frustration with that. Uh, they off I said, well, we'll do interviews and resumes, and we talked about the urgency of now, this moment we're living in, enough. We all have to step up. We all have to be accountable. All of us have to step up and be accountable. It's a serious moment, a moment of confidence, a crisis for members of the community. People have lived here for years and years and not seen it like this. People deserve better, they deserve more, and they deserve all of us to be better and do more, and that's why I'm back uh, in this expression, and rather, again, than lament about it and just spend all my time pointing fingers, uh, we're now working around this, and the AG's office said yes, uh, and then we will redeploy uh, those resources, the JAG resources, uh, and uh, support their efforts at the DOJ, and then support his other efforts, as you may recall, uh, a few years back, with the Attorney General, we created a new unit, a retail theft unit, specific to that issue uh, in the Department of Justice as well. We've re resourced that over the last few years. Uh, so he's in a, a very good place uh, to be very supportive. And, of course, your Attorney General happens to be uh, from this county. Uh, so it's personal to him as well. And on a positive note, uh, Ken Houston, better known to locals as the son of Oakland, he's the director of the Beautification Council. This is a nonprofit that yeah. is delivering results. And they are doing this by showing compassion and dignity and respect and employing homeless and justice impacted. Is there anything in the budget to help support groups like Ken's? Well, he's been a big partner of ours. I know him well. And uh, he's been very supportive of our efforts on beautification. He's been out there with us in some of these volunteer efforts. So, look, our Clean California included $1.1 million, billion dollars, $1.1 billion, a few hundred million dollars for matching grants for locals. All of those dollars are, are fungible in the context of being flexible for applications and for programs like his. So there are a lot of resources in this space. Uh, and uh, I will say that beautification effort, Clean California, has turned out to be uh, a very popular program. Uh, it's been oversubscribed, uh, but very supported by the legislature. We we're able to hold the line in its budget uh, this year as well, so we're able to move forward with additional funds over the course of the next fiscal year. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Hey, Governor Jeremy White with Politico. Thanks for making some time for us. Uh, both you and legislative leaders identified retail crime as a priority this year. Since then, there's been um, some missteps, I think, in Sacramento. A lot of people would say you uh, were adamant you weren't going to go to the ballot. Then you floated a ballot initiative. You pulled it back at the 11th hour. Now it looks like a lot of these legislative efforts could be eclipsed by that ballot initiative that you and legislative leaders failed to neutralize. What's your message for the people of California looking at this and seeing that you and legislative leaders were not able to, to make it happen on this? Well, I completely reject the premise of your question. Uh, we have 13 pieces of legislation that are substantive and meaningful that actually address the issues at hand. Uh, those pieces of legislation are moving through the process and they'll land on my desk in a matter of weeks. Uh, and they address fundamentally the issues at hand. The substance, the meaningful substance of providing unprecedented grants, hundreds of millions of dollars to address these issues and the work that the California Highway Patrol, with respect, uh, I, I give them more respect for the success of their programs, the success of the legislature in appropriating these funds, the success of the legislature in moving forward. Uh, with at least 12 or 13 active bills that substantively address these issues. Uh, I think the issue you're referring to is a drug policy reform uh, that the DA's association is promoting. 
uh, that has a price tag in the billions and billions of dollars. And I'll uh, ask you, on behalf of those that read um, your columns, uh, to ask them, um, where's that money coming from? How are you going to fund those programs? Where are those resources coming from? Billions and billions of dollars over the next few years. By the way, that's not my words. It's LAO's office. Hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Those incarceration costs, et cetera. Why is it that you lay claim that this is a retail theft framework, but you didn't even touch the threshold, the $950 threshold, which I think all of you reported is the number one issue that they were complaining about, but it wasn't even included in their initiative because it's not about retail theft. It's about drug policy reform fundamentally. So that was our effort to try to call that out, and we ran out of time with the legislature. Uh, that happens all the time. You follow Sacramento. Uh, so I'm really proud of the work the legislature's done. I'm proud of the package of reforms that will be on my desk very shortly. I'm proud of the uh, operations that are underway locally with the funds that we've provided. Uh, and we're getting serious about organized retail thefts, things that are way out of the purview of Prop uh, 47. And I'm very concerned, yes, you are right, about this drug policy reform that uh, takes possession and ultimately makes it a felony and uh, increases the size uh, of our prison population by tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, over the course of the next decade at a profound cost to the taxpayers uh, and I don't think an improvement of public safety. Thanks, Governor. A quick follow-up. Um, you have, of course, expressed frustration with the district attorney, Pamela Price, not making use of state resources. She's facing a recall vote in November, fueled by concerns about her not doing enough on crime. Do you have a position on that? Do you think she needs to be recalled? It's all about politics. It's not about politics today. It's about partnership. Uh, we're here to try to solve problems. Um, I expressed my point of view about disappointment, and we also expressed a strategy to address that disappointment with action. We're here to take action. Uh, and not point fingers. Um, I think uh, Oakland deserves the support, and we're going to provide it. Thanks, Governor. Thanks. Thank you, Governor. Following up on the national topic that was brought up yesterday, uh, George Clooney says that uh, the Joe Biden America saw during on the debate stage is the same one that he saw at the Peacock Theater. You were there at the fundraiser, and you were there at the debate. Are you not seeing what he sees? No. I, well, we've been, I think all of us that were at that fundraiser, wondering what... Uh, what they were thinking is scheduling the president, uh, who uh, just got overseas to a fundraiser late at night. Uh, and uh, I came home very exhausted that night. Uh, and all I had to do was fly down from Sacramento to L.A. Um, and uh, I think the first comments I had to the president were like, who, who did your schedule? Uh, I, I can't, couldn't even handle three hours and uh, a red eye, uh, let alone coming from overseas. So to me, that's, those are two different things. The person that showed up at that, that, that fundraiser uh, was a human being, like any of us, exhausted. Uh, but as it relates to the debate, that's a, that's a whole different debate and conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Governor. Good to see you. This is um, Annabelle Sosa with the LA Times. Uh, just a question following up from Jeremy regarding the uh, ballot initiative that uh, was pulled. Um, so, you know, you're talking about the importance of these relationships with district attorneys, uh, DA Pamela Price. Where, where does your relationship stand now with these more moderate conservative uh, district attorneys who are leading the, the, the ballot measure that is now making its way to November? Like, where does the relationship stand? I'm thinking of well, I, DA I, Jeff, Jeff Reislick of Yolo County. I mean, have, have those relationships been splintered? I know discussions come on, come on. didn't I've been go doing, well. Uh, happens all the time. Uh, happens in my house. Uh, happens with my kids. It's life. Uh, don't over, overthink this. We have a fundamental disagreement around this initiative. We have deep agreement and alignment about keeping you safe. We just have a different approach in terms of how we achieve the same goals. So that's, uh, no, I, I'm disappointed um, that uh, uh, they, uh, they're moving forward with this. I think, it, uh, I think we'll, we'll pay, all of us will pay a huge price if it passes. I mean, quite literally, um, not the fiscal price, but uh, I think a huge opportunity. Uh, cost uh, in terms of, of moving forward in a, a more enlightened direction. So yeah, I'm disappointed in that. Uh, but we work together on on many issues. So that's that's the nature of the work I do every single day in my professional life and dare I say at peril my private life as well. Would you say just to follow up that the DA's association the leaders who are involved in those negotiations have they made themselves pariahs in the legislature? Well, that's you got to ask members of the legislature. What about for you though? I, I disagree with them on this issue. Vehemently disagree with them on this issue, and I hope that folks take a look at this initiative. Not what they say it is, but what it actually is. Consider the cost, consider the impact, 
Consider how this brings us back decades and decades on simple possession um, on drug policy. And again, I, 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 I plead with you. There needs to be accountability. I'm trying to balance budgets at the same time, maintain investments. Where do the dollars come from? How do we finance this? I've been in this for a long, long time. This illusion that somehow you can set up thousands and thousands of drug treatment centers. Where? With what personnel? How are they going to deliver on what they're promoting? And the challenge for them is they can't answer that in good conscience because they don't have a strategy plan. They don't have a funding source. So again, on this issue, to your question, I'm responding very clearly and concisely. Uh, I vehemently disagree with their perspective on this drug policy reform, Proposition 36. Just quickly, there, thank you. There wasn't a price tag on your ballot initiative. There wasn't time for that. What would the, how would that have been paid for, the competing initiative that you, you know, a, a simple fentanyl enhancement, uh, pretty modest to zero cost. I mean, not even, it's, uh, one has nothing to do with the other. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Felicia Mello with CalMatters. Um, in speaking with community members here in Oakland, specifically about the CHP deployment, um, one of the things I hear probably most often is, you know, CHP is great at recovering stolen cars, and what we're really concerned about is the crime at small businesses and homicides, and um, that, you know, there is a mismatch between the resources being proposed and the actual need. And probably the thing also I hear most often, right, is this idea that we need more community violence prevention programs, right? We need yeah. alternatives yeah. for particularly young people to crime. Yeah. So can you address that critique that there's a disconnect between the problem here and the proposed solution? Uh, yes, thank you for that opportunity. I, I point them to the uh, violence intervention program. Uh, when I came in, it was a few million dollars. I think we bolstered it to $200 million to provide grants for community building, to provide opportunities for youth, and to provide the underlying issues, or at least address the underlying issues to address those concerns the community has identified. We put unprecedented investments in violence intervention. The work we've done through Cal Volunteers to get youth jobs, the Climate Corps, the work we've done on College Corps. We've asked for 450 hours, uh, and we provide $10,000 grants proportion number uh, first in their family uh, to have those opportunities to go to college. Uh, people from cities like Oakland and all around the region, Alameda County and elsewhere. Unprecedented support for our youth uh, summer programs as well, coming from the state, uh, building on the work that the local government's doing. It was highlighted uh, by the representative of Epic Times, and I appreciated that uh, framework, that we're hiring formerly homeless individuals, people that were previously incarcerated in, in the Clean California initiative, a new initiative. So we're across the spectrum providing all of those supports. And I noted uh, that 10-point specific strategy and plan through Caltran as an additional enhancement uh, to these broader efforts. But we're not coming here to try to solve every That's not the job of the CHP. We're trying to solve specific issues around sideshows, uh, deal with the issues of DUIs, reduce some of the stress and the burden on the Alameda DA's office so they can focus on some of these other critical issues, as you suggest, and the residents demand. So absolutely, we're not trying to replicate. We're not taking over uh, the jurisdiction here. We're supplementing and supporting, uh, rather supplementing some areas, but primarily supporting uh, the areas uh, that uh, the city and the county and the region are already uh, advancing. Yeah, I just want to clarify that. So am I hearing you correctly that the CHP deployment is not aimed at directly addressing issues like homicide and crime and well, I mean, small businesses, but more vehicle-related crimes to free up well, uh, uh, well, let, well, let me, let me, uh, uh, let me build on that. We've got many other operations, the California Highway Patrol, including retail theft operations. Uh, the commissioner noted 55, 50, I think it's 55 or 56, uh, guns that have been recovered that are directly related to crimes. So that extends beyond just the issue as you uh, attach. Uh, we also, as it relates to the arrests, have many felony arrests, outstanding warrants that are directly impacting all of those other crimes. So no, this, this is an operation that is uh, much broader uh, than uh, just what's occurring uh, in the context of, uh, of, of what's going on around the, the roads and the freeways. By the way, in addition to all of this, we also, as you know, have been installing these flock cameras. We highlighted that led to a murder suspect, or rather, uh, a attempted murder suspect, I believe, an attempted murder suspect on the freeway because the flock camera investments that we're making. I we believe we have 190 uh, that will be installed within a matter of the next many weeks. 
Uh, I think we're putting 25 or so in each week. 69 have been installed. The rest of that operation will be complete. All that will also advance some of those broader efforts of investigation. I don't know if you, Chief or Commissioner, you want to amplify that. I'll, I'll jump in. I'll just jump in shortly and just talk about um, uh, traffic stops or vehicle stops done by CHP. Uh, I, I, I would direct you toward uh, DDACs data-driven approach to crime and traffic safety. Uh, it's data out there that supports that when we, when one of our officers or any officer that is working within our county or within our city does a traffic stop, that traffic stop has an effect on the crime within that area for several hours after that traffic stop because people see the stop and see their presence. Part of what they're doing in these traffic stops is to create a high visibility presence within our community so it, it to address that perception of crime and crime itself, but I, I would direct you toward the DDAX approach. Commissioner, you? Yeah, I agree completely, and I think <clears throat> a lot of times misperception of the CHP is we're out there writing speeding tickets, uh, parking tickets. It's, it's so much more than that. It's evolved so much over the last 90 years, and we have some of the most competent uh, investigators. You know, the, a lot of uh, investigations will spawn out of a traffic stop, but will roll up into auto theft rings, uh, complex organized crime rings. So. Um, the, the 56 guns is evidence of that. You know, these are these are criminals that are uh, conducting crimes, and I agree with the chief too. There's there's uh, a huge impact from just the black and white patrol car out there in presence, and it deters, and it slows down people, and it apprehends people. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Can you address briefly um, the question of privacy around CHP control of those cameras? I know there have been concerns raised also within Oakland that having CHP control them versus local control then actually sets a different standard that doesn't acknowledge all the conversations that Oakland local government has had about how to use those in a way that respects privacy. They all kind of looked at me on that one, yeah. I'm um, looking at you too. <laughs> so our, we operate those cameras in compliance with the law. And um, Oakland is working through the process now through the Privacy Commission in the city to get their cameras up and on board. The 190 cameras that the governor mentioned um, are on state right away, and those will be uh, CHP exclusive cameras through FLOC, and they, FLOC works through a network. But, um, you know, the, the information we're gaining from those cameras, they're used to develop leads, develop criminal leads. They do not uh, lead to the direct arrest of anybody. Those are just, it's another tool for law enforcement to use. And so all of our privacy of the cameras are in compliance with the law. Thank you. And I'll jump in just real quick. Yes, uh, there, there's an agenda item, I believe, next week in regards to the Privacy Commission going, uh, that, that uh, memorandum going to the Privacy Commission. So we're working in conjunction with our current uh, officials to make sure that we are following the rules, even with the implementation of the FLOC program. And uh, we want to get those cameras up. and. Uh, and get moving. So we're doing our part in the state right of ways and the freeways, but uh, I'd love to see the city move forward with the resources we provided them uh, to get their cameras up and operationalized as well. Hey, Governor Newsom, thanks for taking our questions. Ellie Kamisher with Bloomberg. Uh, you signed a $20 minimum wage law for fast food workers that include an exemption for chains that bake and sell bread. In March, your office said reporting on this exemption related to a Panera Bread and a billionaire was absurd, but you never explained why the exemption was put into the law. It's been months since that controversy. Uh, do you have an explanation for this bakery exemption? It went through a process over the course of two years. The legislature had uh, dozens of hearings. There was a process that unfolded in terms of partnerships and coalitions that were being built, and, uh, and we advanced it. But my understanding is they were never exempted at the end of the day. So. I don't know what the issue ultimately is. Well, I will note, just if I may, um, there was some um, misleading reporting as it relates to uh, the $20 minimum wage about its impact on jobs and employment. Uh, you may have seen the actual numbers that just came out. An increase of over 10,000 new jobs in the fast food industry since we initiated that $20 minimum wage, uh, running completely contra uh, to some of the reporting that was previously done. I think it's just important to highlight that the intention of this uh, was to provide low-wage workers the dignity um, and, the, and the opportunity uh, to, to raise a family and not end up on the, the public dole, as many uh, low-wage workers do, and, uh, and also an increase in improved productivity. And I think it's uh, the early signs uh, are showing success in that respect. To follow up to that point, so why would employees of large bakery chains be exempted from getting their well, we, wages uh, we, lift? And Chris Holden, the law, the yeah. you know author, did not 
know why this was put into the bill, neither did the SCIU. No one's actually providing an explanation. Yeah. Oh, well, went through a legislative we'll process. have to, uh, I, I don't know, the author of the bill's explanation, forgive me, I'm unaware of his. Uh, his said that the governor's office was uh, responsible for the negotiation. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we've, I think we've, we've discussed this very openly and publicly for, I think, six months. So I, I don't have much to add about Mr. Holden's recent comments as it relates to rates this and the like. Thank you. Hi, Governor Newsom. David Hernandez with the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, just to clarify the basics of the operation you announced today, um, how many more officers will this bring to Oakland, and how many days a week will they be working here, and for how many hours per shift? So it's 162 shifts, seven days a week, number of officers. Uh, I'll leave that to our expert here. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to keep the, the exact number. I can tell you it's uh, just confidential for the safety of the officers. I can tell you the baseline right now, um, we, were, we were operating about two to three days a week. Um, safe streets, which I mentioned, was seven uniformed members uh, going out two to three days a week. Um, the, uh, the crime suppression team was also in the city of Oakland two to three days a week. Uh, as the governor mentioned, each of those teams will be expanded to seven days a week, and so we'll be increasing the personnel enough to to staff those. In addition to that, we will be doing um, some special operations that fall within CHP's wheelhouse, uh, side street or side uh, the street takeovers, the street racing, uh, the the uh, DUI checkpoints. We'll be doing those in addition to the that baseline operation. So. You can't give a general number like you have in the past, like in February, it was 120. Yeah, I can tell you the baseline officer number will be around uh, around 20 officers baseline seven days a week. And then the number of the surges, uh, I won't give you the exact number on that. Thanks. Uh, and then but uh, again, important point to emphasize, it's a fourfold increase from the current operations and it's a seven day a week operation. So back to the National Guard prosecutors. Um, do you explain whether you were under the impression that was actually going to happen when you announced it? And <laughs> what kind of cases will they be focusing on? Well, I wouldn't have announced it if I wasn't under the impression it was going to happen, uh, particularly on the basis of it uh, actually materializing in the city and county of San Francisco. Uh, and I really appreciate the district attorney's support. Um, and, uh, and, and I think it's, it's proven uh, successful. Again, uh, the entire unit was just a supervisor under the narcotics unit in the Alameda. Uh, we were looking to double it just with one person. Uh, we were gonna offer more additional personnel as needed uh, as they re redeployed on the basis of existing operations. Now there's not a person uh, there. Uh, so uh, I, I felt it was imperative to keep pushing. We did for a course of number of months. We laid this out in, in a letter, try to uh, be more precise. You can, I refer to that. And uh, we just felt at this stage uh, with everything going on, everything swirling, uh, the need to do more, uh, we uh, needed just to pull the plug at this stage and, uh, and do something that we know will work uh, with the AG's office. Um, and then uh, on a final point, uh, the Chronicle recently reported that Oakland um, for years has misreported crime data, uh, in large part because of a lag. And uh, your office has relied on some of that data, including a 33% reduction in crime. Um, what, what can be done to ensure that Californians get ac accurate crime I'd data? refer to you, uh, w that's local data. You can refer to uh, our chief. You can discuss that a little bit more. We rely on uh, local OPD data. Yes, and, and, and we are taking a deep dive into our data and our ability to report uh, accurate and timely data. And one of the things that I can tell you as we look at this, and we put information out, my PIO has put information out uh, this week, and I believe some, he put some information out last week. Uh, when you're talking about persons' crimes, your, your homicide, your, your murders, your sexual assaults, your violent crimes, those numbers are very accurate. Uh, the delay comes from our online reporting in regards to property crimes. And we know there's a lag. Uh, we also are, are in the implementation phase of a brand new uh, computer aided dispatch, and we are uh, moving forward with a brand new uh, records management system uh, that we're close to presenting to council for uh, final approval to. to get into contract with a new re records management uh, company. So uh, you, are, you are correct. There is a lag, but that lag has to do with our property crimes, not our person's crimes. Okay? And, uh, you know, 
no doubt is going to convince me that we don't need to do more here in Oakland and Alameda. I assure you that. That's why we're here. We need to do more. Thank you. Yes, uh, <clears throat> thanks for taking the time today. Uh, Jacob Rogers, East Bay Times, Mercury News. I uh, just wanted to, to ask, I mean, obviously you've shown a great deal of investment in, in the Oakland uh, area and the city here. Uh, I mentioned that you're not a mayor anymore. And I want to get your <laughs> thoughts on you know, essentially uh, what's been going on here in Oakland with the uh, with Mayor Tao um, and uh, the FBI raids, grand jury investigation going on. I want to ask, first of all, I mean, do you have any thoughts on her tenureship, her, leader, her, her, her tenure, her leadership here, as well as, you know, essentially, um, do you have any concerns about her ability to do the job uh, given the distraction that has happened with uh, with these rates? I'll leave that to you and others that uh, are more in tune with the day-to-day -day, uh, governance of Oakland. Uh, as it relates to uh, those investigations, inappropriate for me uh, to comment on them. I, I will say, though, I, I will comment on my personal engagement as it relates to this partnership that goes back, as you know, almost a year, goes back uh, to February when it was highlighted uh, and extends today. Uh, that's been a good working relationship. Um, j just to be sure, I mean, it sounds like uh, you've been pictured with uh, the, the Duong family who are the subject of this investigation. It also appears that your Attorney General, Rob Bonta, appears to have some very close ties to this family. Uh, do you know the family yourself, and uh, do you have any concerns about Bonta's involvement with that family? I, I don't know anything about the Attorney General's involvement or with anyone uh, as it relates to those individuals. I, I don't, I imagine, uh, I know, I mean, no, no, no association with them, and I imagine had some passing uh, meetings or something somewhere. So, but beyond that, absolutely nothing. And, and lastly, just to be sure, I mean, it, it, do you have any sort of lingering uh, doubts about the ability for Oakland to? To deal with a lot of these issues that you obviously are very uh, passionate about here, just given um, the turmoil that's happened here recently. Well, we're here for a reason. We try to bolster this community, let them know we have their back. We said we'd come back. We're here in that spirit, um, in that light. Um, we can't be here forever. Uh, we're here for the next four months, and uh, we'll see what happens in the next four months. But uh, we, we said we, we were firm in our commitment. We weren't going to walk away. Uh, and the fact that we're here is... You perhaps could read between the lines uh, for a reason. Uh, we're back. Hi, Governor. I'm Annalise Finney for KQED News. I just have a quick question. Last month, your office appointed ADA Michael Nieto from the Alameda District Attorney's Office to the Superior Court in Contra Costa. ADA Nieto is currently under review for potentially having been part of an office-wide practice of denying black and Jewish jurors the opportunity to serve on death penalty cases. Was your office aware of this review when you made that appointment? Yeah, we weren't. Um, we have a judicial process. It's very exhaustive. It goes through the Jenny and JSAC commissions. None of this was brought up in any of those uh, um, uh, analyses or in, uh, investigations. JSAC actually had him as extremely well qualified. Uh, Jenny is well qualified, uh, active in La Raza law and mentorship programs. And he ironically was the one supervisor <laughs> in the Alameda County DA's office on the narcotic cases. Now he's gone. Uh, that said, uh, that uh, investigation uh, also is being advanced in, in the GO, as we refer to it, uh, with my judicial team. Uh, they're interviewing uh, the individual, and uh, they'll be assessing the merits of those allegations as well and providing me um, an update on that very, very shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Governor, good morning. Ryan Curry with ABC7 News. We talked about the Attorney General's involvement but for the cases that do go before the Alameda County DA, how would you like her to act and respond? Look, we, we're just we're not we're not removing all the cases. I don't want to overstate this. We're just we're just going to provide support for complex cases that are labor intensive, uh, so she can focus on the bulk of the cases that are in front of her. Uh, we're just trying to provide more resources and be more resourceful. Uh, she chose not to embrace that path, and, uh, and we have a mechanism with the, with the AG's office, Department of Justice, to, uh, to do just that. Uh, look, it, it, she was independently elected. I'm not here to offer advice or counsel. Um, I can only observe what I've observed. Uh, we extended a hand of partnership. Unfortunately, uh, it wasn't uh, reciprocated, and, and, and good people could disagree. She may have had strong opinions, it appears she did. Uh, we never got a detailed understanding of what the issue was. Uh, initially, she showed interest in that partnership, and it uh, just never materialized. But we don't have time. We just don't have time. People don't want to wait another hour, another day. They don't want to go through another weekend. 
the Juneteenth activities here, what's happened with these retail thefts. Um, you know, I've been down there. I've been meeting with a lot of these gas station folks down there in Hagenberger and elsewhere. Um, and, you know, I appreciate the role and the job of governor representing the state, larger than 21 state populations combined, 478 cities. I was a former mayor. I understand my role as former mayor. I also understand my role as governor. I'm doing my best here uh, to provide support and resources, but the role in our jurisdiction is also uh, clear, and that's why this is a four-month operation. It's not a permanent operation. Uh, we're not here to take all the prosecution away from the DA, not, not, not even close, uh, just to support uh, and reduce some of that stress on the complex cases, and AG's office is well-equipped to do that, uh, and we are providing that support if the AG needs it for our JAGs. Uh, we have one in particular, 25 years of remarkable experience from Southern California, is ready to come on up, take these cases, um, next level, rock star, uh, and uh, we're, we're just eager to get moving. Governor, thank you. Thank you. With that, well, that's a good way to end. Eager to get moving. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll end this uh, as I always end this. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, and we have your back, Oakland and Alameda. Uh, you matter. We care. And, uh, and uh, we have a lot more work to do together. Thank you all very much.